come passive. It's not just a word because it was said, it, it ends up being done. It's a word that because it was believed, it ends up being done. You must latch hold of it, not just for yourself, but for others also. So we, we must build ourselves up with such a collective faith that the weak are made strong. When they come into your presence, yeah. there's something about you that causes any bit of life in them to jump up, yeah. to come alive, and to conquer death. That's right. Amen. I've been alone before, and, and you have a tendency that when you're alone, uh, to uh, it's hu human nature, when, when you're alone, you can become down. So we have got to learn how to get around people that lift us up. It's also that we can get around people that put, put us down. So all the more reason. Get around people that put you up. Here's the thing, though. You should be one of those that always bring people up. Yes. Quit looking to be in one sense. I know every once in a while you need, you need a boost. You need a help. You need a, you need a, you need a lift up. Uh, but the mature aren't always needing a lift up. Babies need to be picked up. Adults stand up. Babies, toddlers, little ones, pick me up, right? How many of you raised kids before? The seven-year-old didn't go to the two-year-old and go, pick me up. You always went to somebody stronger, somebody taller, somebody bigger. The little goes to the bigger and say, pick me up. I'm going I'm to be the bigger. I'm going to be the bigger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, if you're happy and you know it, say Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> Just, now I got you listening. That was good. That was, that was a good Yankee Doodle Dandy there. All right, we'll do the spiritual version. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. 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 Good and Southern there. Um, we, we started a, a, a message series here uh, last week on vision values, thank, uh, purpose, and thank you to Jonathan Kimmel. He gave me a better word than what I had. I had vision, values, purpose, and volunteerism because I, you know, I was th looking for V's, and I didn't have a V for P for purpose. Uh, but volunteerism, I didn't like the word, so he sent me a text uh, last Sunday and said, what about participation? So we're making the adjustment to call that last series, which is coming on game day, February the 3rd, um, for participation. So vision, values... Purpose and participation. Can you say them with me, please? Vision, values, purpose, participation. One more time. Vision, values, purpose, participation. If you're writing notes, what did you just write down? Vision, values, purpose, participation. Did I hear somebody say nothing? Anyway, no. Vision, values, purpose, and participation. Last week we talked about vision. Um, I, we, we read a large portion of, of Scripture yes, uh, last week out of Acts chapter 7. Uh, and, and you say, now how does that relate uh, to vision? Well, it related to vision in the sense that uh, call and, and vision, what, what different individuals listed, we're not going to rehearse it, um, but in Acts chapter 7, Stephen, before he's stoned, he basically goes back to the beginning and shares not just the covenant, but the call... Of every one of these men, Abraham, Moses, David, I mean, he just goes on down the line, right? And what he ends up saying is they sensed the call or they saw the vision. They didn't know how to appropriate what they saw. They jumped the gun in advance, caused trouble for themselves, but the vision still remained. Okay, so go back home and read Acts chapter 7 if you need to to see that point. I don't know if I made it clear enough for you last week to do that, but I was uh, largely dependent upon what we were doing in the Sunday morning service uh, because I knew it matched well with what we would see in the Sunday evening service, which is at 6 o'clock in the foyer there, and we're doing the video series called The Wilderness from John Bevere, and it's incredible, and most of you missed it. That's okay. It gave more incredibleness to those that attended. Um, but I, I want to tell you, we will be doing that again tonight at 6 o'clock in the foyer, uh, looking at the video series from John Bevere called The Wilderness. There's a workbook and stuff that we have to go along with it. We'll give that to you tonight if you come. Uh, if, if you have it already, bring it with you. 
But uh, these, these, these things in, in some ways now will be moving on a little bit and then we'll stay in the video series kind of a little more on, uh, to some degree on, on vision. But, uh, but concerning the wilderness, at some point in time, everybody goes through a wilderness maybe more than one. So you say, well, I'm just living on top of the world. Well, oftentimes what follows top is bottom. So if you'll, if you'll, when you're on the top, you have a tendency to just absorb everything. Everything's good, so therefore you receive everything. You're like, man, God's speaking to me, everything, you know, and just many, and you put it in your arsenal. Well, it's a good thing you did because then when you got at the bottom, you collected treasure and tools when you were at the top. Because sometimes when you're at the bottom, you're like, God ain't speaking to me. This was the wilderness. God's nowhere to be found. I need, I'm, I'm empty. I have no weapons. I have. Yeah, you do. Well, you do, you do, but that's how you feel. So if you recognize, so I'm, I'm speaking to those that are at the top. How many of you are at the top of a mountain right now? A few. It's okay to raise your hand. I just happen to not be at the top of the mountain. I know that. Well, it doesn't matter in one sense. And I see you thought I was at the top of the mountain. No, I act in the opposite spirit. That's good for you. All right. What's that? When I'm at the top, do I act down? No. Actually, I guess I should say, since it's the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, and that self-same spirit lives in me, I usually try to act in the same spirit that I know dwells in me, if I can tell you it that way. So it's the, the same spirit always dwells in me. So whether I'm at a high point or a low point in life, the self-same spirit dwells in me, and he's always quickening my mortal body. So when I'm at the top of the mountain, I, I'm, I, I, I may actually act in a higher measure than than what I, what I even do now. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So we talked, uh, so Acts chapter 7 gives us, gives us a good piece about vision, how to respond uh, and, how, and, and working with vision. I'm not going to recap the whole thing, but we talked about two major, major types of, of vision in this, in this aspect. There is clear vision and then there is Blurry vision or unclear vision, same, same difference or same thing. Um, clear vision, unclear vision. And so when you have clear vision, what do you do? Three things. You write it, you speak it, you do it. You write it, you speak it, you do it. Why? Because you've heard it or you can see it. So you have clear vision. So when it's clear, you write it so that they that read it can run with it. That's what Habakkuk says. So uh, what, what we have to also understand is there are some times when our own vision becomes unclear. But when our vision was clear, because we wrote it, we can go back and read it. You say, well, what was it, the Lord? I'm not hearing the voice of God. Well, okay, then let me go back and look at it in my notes, in my journal, in my whatever, in my phone, or wherever, however you do notes. But because you wrote it, let me go back and find out what was God speaking to me. And when you start rehearsing the word of the Lord to yourself, faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the... Word of God. So when you heard the Word of God and you wrote it down, later on when you're not hearing the Word of God, you can go back and look at what you heard. And now you begin to hear again. And faith comes up and you're like, oh, I was all down, but now I'm strong. Hallelujah. Because I've heard the Word of God. So, well, that's what the Lord said to me back then. Yeah, and it's good now too. Hallelujah. All right. Am I helping you? I hope so. I hope so. All right, now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this uh, on, on purpose today because tomorrow, now last week I, I elaborated on this a little bit, but uh, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Praise God for Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and I, I pray that there be people just like him, or maybe better if that's possible, uh, that take on that same righteous heart that he had 
in dealing with those issues. Uh, we've, we've seen people uh, as in, in, in many years past that didn't deal with it in a godly manner like, like he did, uh, even though they're called reverend, whatever. They just didn't, didn't do it in a biblical, uh, God-reverential way. And so I pray the Lord rise up people that are, that are like that because there's more work to be done in this, in this nation and in this earth. And it's not just a black-white thing. It's an all-people thing because, uh, you know, there's all sorts of races that are hostile towards each other. The major issue in that day was black and white. And there's still major issue in today's day. But there's also major issue with different race against different race. And, 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 it, and it shouldn't be. Um, so you agree with me there? Yeah. Well, then may you be an activist. You heard it earlier. May you be active uh, in, 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 what, in what you believe. Um, Martin Luther King Jr., one of the ways that he was, he was so successful uh, is because he took what he saw, he spoke what he saw. Of course, obviously, it was written as well. And, and what he did is he built picture to the vision uh, for other people to be able to see. He saw something that he knew a bunch of other people in the world just didn't see. But he also knew there might be a bunch of other people in the world that can see but don't have the voice that I have or the, the opportunity that I have or, or whatever. And, and he didn't start with great opportunity. He took little opportunity and opportunity increased. Amen. Amen. When he took little opportunity, big opportunity came little by little by little, more and more and more. He was faithful in that which is little. He became faithful also in, in much. So man with small stage became man with big stage. I can also tell you this. I bet you at the beginning of time he had little vision. But as it went along, vision increased, got bigger and bigger and bigger. As his voice got bigger, so should his vision get bigger. Amen. My concern for most people in, in the world uh, concerning the area of vision is two things. One, they either have vision that doesn't attach to their feet or they have no feet for their vision. They either have vision that doesn't attach to their feet or they have no feet to their vision. Let me, let me explain. By the way, your eyes are connected to your eye sockets, which are connected to your cheekbone, which is connected to your neck, which is connected to your shoulders, which is connected to your spine, which goes down to your hips, which goes down through your femur and your knees and your uh, tib, 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 tibby, your, your shins and, and all that, all the way down to your feet. So your eyes go where your feet go. And largely, your feet goes where your eyes go as well. This is Anatomy 101, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so what, what you see, uh, as it moves down, what you speak will also begin to affect your heart, and it will begin to affect your actions, your feet. What you see, as it moves down... Comes out of your mouth, you speak it, it'll begin to affect your heart, which in turn will begin to affect your feet. You see the process. So if you see something, if you don't begin to say something, your heart won't believe something, your feet won't act something. What you see, begin to speak so that your heart can put everything else in, in, into action. You with me? You okay? So Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. But he didn't just say, I have a dream, he detailed the dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day the red hills of Georgia, the sons of the former slaves and the sons of the former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi back then seemed impossible. I have a dream that my four children, this is the beautiful line, this is the line that everybody loves so much, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But if Martin Luther King Jr. didn't speak the dream, didn't speak his vision, nobody else could see what he also saw. Vision dies when it's not spoken. So whatever it is the Lord has shown you, speak it. Speak it. Speak it rightly. Get clarity if you need to wait before you speak it, but, but speak it. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I want to move on to values, but um, also this. 
Speak your vision to people that champion you. Yes. Oh, yes. Speak your vision to people that champion you. Speak your vision to people that support you. Speak your vision to people that will hear what you say and, and respond with things like, yes. I, you, can, you can do that. Oh, that's good. Go for it, brother. Go for it, sister. You know who those people are. If you don't know who those people are, you know who those people aren't. Where you speak a vision to them, they go, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Now, I'm not saying you should always only go to yes people. You need to go to wise people because sometimes you saw something, but that was because you got, you know, gasoline in your eye, <laughs> whatever. Uh, sometimes you, you need to go to people that, that can say, um, yeah, I, 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 I believe that, but let's make sure that somehow that attaches to your, to your feet. You know, I give you a scriptural example real quick. Joseph, mm -hmm. see, you automatically know. Various dreams that he had, he probably shouldn't have told his brothers that he's going to rule over them. <laughs> Was it truth? Yeah, it came to being. But, you know, it, it, it caused him a lot of trouble. However, however, see, so you see, had he not, they wouldn't have put him in a pit. And then he wouldn't have been sold as a slave into Egypt. He wouldn't be in Egypt. He wouldn't have risen. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> be led, L-E-D, not L-E-A-D. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I want to encourage you, whatever you see, connect it to your mouth so it, so it can connect to your heart, so it can connect to your feet. Connect feet to your vision, but, but whatever you see, begin to, begin to speak it so that they can run with it, that read it. Um, and, and so uh, anyway, we'll, we'll move on. If you have unclear vision, trust God. Follow God one step at a time. Okay, everybody all right? Um, I may get to this today. I was going to slide it in with vision. I may end up sliding it in with values. I may not end up sliding it in at all. But at some point, very soon here, I, I, I want to begin to speak to this house as to what I see for this house. Um, I was sharing with the leadership team uh, this past Thursday. I, I don't see everything. But like we talked about in vision, you're not always going to see everything. Have you ever seen the end of the earth? No. But yet... When you look out, you see the horizon. But the closer you get to the horizon, it seems like it stays about the same distance away. Because it is. <laughs> now, some elevation begins to change some things or whatever. But um, anyway, so, but, but you, get the, you get the point. Uh, I, I, I had this conversation with somebody the other day. Uh, very, very briefly, I'll, I'll, I'll point this out, where, where they ended up saying, uh, well, um, I guess their, their time had come. But I, I want to tell you, God does not have a predetermined time for your death. He does not have a predetermined time for your death. If he had a predetermined time for your death, he would not have put scriptures in there that says, Honor your father and mother in the Lord, for this is the first commandment with promise. For, they, for your days shall be well with, you, uh, well with you on the earth and shall be extended. Yeah. See, it, you wouldn't be able to extend your days if God had a predetermined right. set of time. Uh, you, you also have things that talk about your time being shortened. Yep. So... God hasn't predetermined your end. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad to inform you, you get to determine your end. You get to determine your end. I suggest to you that you look at your end as way on down the line. You say, well, I would like my end to become sooner. Well, let me tell you why you really, really, really don't. You will be held accountable for the, for the vision that God has put in your heart. You say, well, if I keep my eyes closed, I won't see anything. Yeah, but I didn't say that the vision that God has put in your eyes. I said the vision that God has put in your heart. He's got a, I got to be careful. I don't get over to purpose. He's got a purpose for you. And you will be, and I will be held accountable. Have I fulfilled my purpose? Have I fulfilled my purpose? I want as much time as possible to fulfill my purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I gave you a task to do and I gave you a short amount of time to do it, then you end up having to hurry up, get on the ball, and make it done. But if you had plenty of time to do it, you can go, whew, I got plenty of time, right? 
It doesn't mean you get lazy and procrastinate, but you go, I don't have to do this rushed. I can do this well. I will fulfill my purpose. I will fulfill my God-given purpose, my destiny on this earth. I will fulfill it, Artie. I will. I don't care what you say about it. I will fulfill my purpose on the earth. Yeah, amen. I believe it. So, therefore, I'm going to live godly and righteously in Christ Jesus. Why? So that I actually can fulfill my purpose and that my time will be extended in order, in order to do it. I don't have to jump the gun. I don't have to get anxious for what I see. I just have to walk that direction. You don't have to get anxious about what God has placed in your heart. You just have to walk in that direction. Put feet to your sight. Put feet to your eyes. Walk in the direction that you see. You'll get there. You'll get there. If the Lord tells you to pick up the pace, pick up the pace. If he tells you to slow down, you slow down. But walk in that direction. Okay. Are you happy? Can we settle vision for a moment? All right. Values. Everybody say values. values. What is value? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll carry this in a similar manner that we carried vision. Dictionary definitions here. Uh, value, the no, number one definition, a monetary worth of something. Uh, market price. You ever been to a seafood restaurant and they, and they say such and such fish, market price? Well, you have to ask, what's the, what's the market price? That means, what's it valued at today? Uh, stock market goes up and down and changes in value all the time, right? It's, it's fluctuating. So if you're in those types of things, you're constantly uh, looking at what is its current value. And you know as a good investor, buy low, sell high. Why? So you can add value somewhere else. Your value was over here, but I'm going to exchange the value of that for the value of this, right? I'm going to sell that stock... And, and put it into cash or into another stock. Why? Because I've learned how to manipulate and how to make values work for me. Amen. Do you see that? So you learn how to not manipulate value, but take it, I, I, I use that term, but I, I should have said it this way. You learn how to take advantage of value. You learn how to take advantage of value. You buy low, you sell high. Um, how many of you fill up your, filled up your gas tank the other day when you found out gas was presently uh, $1.96 and you found out that many gas stations the next day were jumping up to two nineteen? You go and you fill up your gas tank. Anybody do it? Hands, please. Okay, anytime you need to know value, go talk to one of these people. They have wisdom in the area. You say, well, I didn't know. Okay, um, so, so you didn't know. You didn't see. You didn't have knowledge. You didn't have vision for what was coming. So therefore, you couldn't appropriate value. See a connection. Because I know, because I can foresee, I have foreknowledge of the fact that I will be using that tank of gas. I'm going to fill up that tank while the, the price of gas is low. Why? So that I can have increased value in my pocketbook and also have increased value in my gas tank. You increase the value on both sides. Vision and value work, work together. Uh, definition number two of value, uh, a fair return or equivalent in good services or money for something exchanged. Well, I just gave you good examples there, uh, probably better examples for that than, the, than even definition number one. Uh, number three, the relative worth, the utility or importance. So now we begin to take it away from the money line of things. The, the, the relative worth, so whatever it is that it relates to, the worth of something as, as though it relates as to what it relates to. Uh, it was a little cool this morning. I love it. It's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, so when it's cool, you put on something that has value associated to cool weather, and that is called a... A jacket or a coat or a sweater or something. Why? Because the, the tool to use against cold is something warm. You know, some of you... So, so nobody put on a bathing suit this morning. <laughs> but if it were hot and you were going to the beach, there's something of value that you use. You don't put on a coat. You put on a swimsuit. swimsuit. Why? Because it's relative... To, the, the worth is relative to the situation at, at hand. So... Um, you you got to associate value in the right place. Um, if, if, if you were cold, having a bunch of money doesn't do you any good unless you exchange that money for something that brings warmth. 
uh, dad, when he preached uh, several, several years back um, in, in looking at the things that were happening in our, in our uh, world economy, in our American economy, and really encouraging us to prosper because we can prosper when there's a world downturn, there's a kingdom upturn. Woo, that's good right there, man. Mm, okay, I'll encourage myself in the Lord. When there's a world downturn, there's a kingdom upturn. You don't believe me? Joseph. Joseph. I see seven years of plenty, but I also see seven years of famine. So while we have seven years of plenty, O wise ruler, set aside. And the wise ruler said, well, I'm not so wise because I didn't know what this dream meant, but apparently you are wise, so why don't you do this for me? And Joseph, in return, saved his whole house, the scripture says. Not just himself, but his whole house. Okay, when there's a world downturn, there's a kingdom upturn. Can you say that? When there's a world downturn, there's a kingdom upturn. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move, I'll move, I'll move. I'm going to show you something uh, concerning your value. Uh, please turn real quick, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. He being God, because if you back up to verse 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, he that spared not. Verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So he spared not his own son. If, if in talking about value here, if he would give us that which is greatest, he has no problem giving us anything that's lesser than. That's what this verse says in a nutshell. If, if he would extend the greatest amount of value, then certainly he would extend all the other types of value. If, if you were willing to pay $10,000 for something and you saw it on sale for $8,000, what do you do? You go buy it and you go buy it quickly. Maybe the price point was too high for you. Uh, you know, I, w I wasn't talking about a television or something, you know. So, so you know, make it groceries. You, you, you buy a gallon of uh, Publix tea. How about that? Publix sweet tea. So Publix sweet tea is like $3 a gallon. Every once in a while, it goes on buy one, get one free. Well, we run and we get some because it's a lot cheaper now. All right. So if, if, he, would, if he would spend the most then certainly he would give you everything that fell underneath its value. Are you with me there? All right. I'm going to read this to you out of um, a, different, a different translation here. Uh, this is actually called the People's Bible Notes. But it says, He that spared not his own son, if he gave his son to die for us, it is impossible that he should refuse us anything that will help or bless us. He has nothing he values more than his son. He has nothing he values more than his son. So if he would give us the thing of most value, then by all means he's going to give us everything that's less, that's less valuable. Okay, so that's where, where we end up in, in all sorts of other scriptures. We are bought with a price. What is that price? The precious blood of Jesus. So uh, let me ask you a, a natural question. If you paid a high dollar value for an item, what are you going to do with that item. You're going to take care of it. You're going to value it. Why? Because it cost you a lot. I said it this way in, uh, a, few, a few weeks back. You care for what you care for. Mom just got a new car. Cool looking car. Yeah. A paid for car. Yeah. Saved for 12 years. Went down and bought it cash. Praise God. How many of you saved for 12 years to buy your car? <laughs> yeah, that's how they buy cars like they buy because they save for a long time until they can go down and buy a cash. That will be me. If I can't say that's me about it, I say that, that, that will be me. One day we'll, we'll go down and buy nice, nice cars on cash because 
we didn't throw away all of our cash to the bank for interest. But anyway, but presently that's where we sit. But anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll get off of that. Yeah. So anyway, um, so where was I before I gave? Oh, oh, you care for. All right. So if, if, if God paid the ultimate price, the blood of Jesus, the life of his son, if he paid that in order to purchase you, he exchanged something. We read the definitions of exchange there. He traded one commodity for another. Amen. He cashed in one thing so that he might obtain another. Right? right? Yeah. So because it was such a high price of which he paid for the thing that he wanted to buy, he values that which he bought at the same value of that what he paid. Maybe even greater. Yeah. Yeah. And that's me. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you tracking with me? Because if you got a good deal on something, you know that you can't replace it for the price that you paid for it, then you cherish that thing a little extra than a lot of other stuff. If it's a dime a dozen, no big deal. But if it's one in a million, big deal. Well, guess what? The blood of Jesus can't be spilt again. It can't be respent. So that which he purchased with his blood cannot be reobtained. It must be kept. Must be held on to. It's, you, let me just say it this way. I can pump you up here. You're valuable to God. At what value? Not just the fact that his blood was spilt, but you must add to it. His blood can't be spilt again. You cannot be repurchased. You must be retained. You're not just worth the blood of Jesus as if the blood of Jesus can be gathered and poured out again. One sacrifice once for all. That's your value. That's your value. So it wasn't just a high price. It was a priceless price. A price that can never be obtained, never be achieved again. You, there's no price that can be paid for you again for you to, 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 to be in God's belonging. Hallelujah. You should meditate on that. That should give you great comfort it should cause you to want to run into the arms of Jesus and not run from his arms. It should cause you to recognize that your Christian walk is valuable and not something that you should be careless about. It should be something that you cherish and place value in and tend after and care for. Why? Because you cannot be obtained again. Can the gift be wasted? Yes. Should it be wasted? No. That's your value. Let me see if I have anything else I want to give you there. Oh, well, yeah, you remember Matthew 13, verses 44 and 45. We'll read them real quick. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. I gave you a different example, a flip side example of this a few weeks ago. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field that which when a man has found it, he hid it, and for joy thereof, for joy of the treasure that was hidden, for the joy he went and sell, sold all that he had to buy that field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. There's, there's two things you can walk away with, and they're both true. He is the pearl of great price. You are the pearl of great price. He is a treasure hidden in a field. You are a treasure hidden in a field. They both remain true. I know a lot of people who will only take one. I know a lot of other people uh, that will only take the other. But they both remain true. I'm going to give you this real, real quick. But this, this is where we have to, to, to take our, our, our next step revelation. We have to get out of the outer court and see it in the, in, the, in the inner court. We have to move out of the place of sacrifice and move into the place of intimacy uh, where, where we recognize you and Christ are one. So if he was the treasure hidden in the field, that means also you are the treasure hidden in the field. You can't. 
You can't separate yourself when you want to be separate and connect yourself when you want to be connected. You're either in or you're not. Amen. Stay in. All right. So here's the deal. You pay the price for whatever it is that you really want. You'll pay the price. That's why bad guys do a ransom. That's why we negotiate deals. I want it, but I don't want it that bad. And the other guy says, I want to sell it, but I don't want to sell it that bad. See, you want to bring him down. He don't want to go down. So you find a place of meeting. Transaction is made. Hopefully both parties walk away happy. Doesn't always happen that way. Um, but anyway, you, pre you pay the price for what you really want, right? I want to move, move back to, to something here. Okay. Um, my dad preached for many years. Pastor Wayne Freed, right here, sitting on this front row. Uh, hallelujah. I'm so grateful for you. I really am. Hallelujah. Not to exclude you. Because there was probably many days, like, like there was the day when I told Maria, I don't want to go today. And, and she said, you have to go. I said, no, I don't. And she says, well, they're expecting you to be there. I said, well, let them figure it out on their own. <laughs> and she said, now, how will that work for your message of faithfulness? Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Um, that wasn't today, by the way. Uh, but so you've probably said that, that many times. Uh, thank God for, for a help meet for us. For those of you that have a help meet for you, not just a help mate, it's a help equal to. That's what that word means, help meet, a help equal to you. That's supposed to sit side by side with you. So, okay, I got to get off that because I'm going down another road. But uh, husbands, quit, quit looking at your spouse as being your help mate, like they're, they're, they're your, your servant. But rather begin to look at them as they're your help meet, equal, equal with. That's how they really help you. That's how they really help you. Because you're supposed to see eye to eye. And when you don't see eye to eye, the one who is higher lifts up the one who is lower. There goes back to that example earlier, the greater helping the, the lesser. Okay. Dad, Dad said for a long time, your values set your priorities. And Jerry Kimmel, can you finish? And your priorities set the... Landmarks of your life. Thank you very much. I was triggering that old cobweb brain of yours there. I huh? got it. So he's, uh, <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> your uh, values set your priorities, and your priorities set the landmarks of your life. Your values set your priorities, and your priorities set the landmarks of your life. What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to relate it to vision because we already covered vision. Remember Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Or other translation says, uh, and obviously we know the primary uh, the thing that we walk away, the primary principle is a spiritual one where, it, where there is no God-given revelation. The people cast off restraint. When you can't see what it is you're supposed to accomplish, you end up not caring, ultimately what that means. So... So values, your values set your priorities, your priorities set the landmarks of your life. So similar to that idea in Proverbs 29, 18, it's not possible to exercise proper disciplines to achieve an unknown goal. You care for what you care for, right? Told, told you that already. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Here's, 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 a, here's a, an example from Scripture when people chose not to look at God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18 says, Flee fornication. 618, flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. 19, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Hallelujah. There's another one. Where's the Holy Ghost? In me. In me. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? You are not your own, verse 20. You are bought with a price, value. Therefore, respond to that value. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are both God's. Yeah. Parenthetical, I added the both. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are both God's. 
Um, in, in, in Romans, uh, I don't think I have it in my notes. In Romans chapter... Yeah, you can help me if I say what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. We just read the verses. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. You're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Romans 1, 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became as fools. Now, it goes on. And changed the glory of the un- uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. We just read 1 Corinthians 6 20. Therefore glorify God in your bodies. In response to the value, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Here in Romans 1, they did not. Honor, they did not value God. Therefore, they did not glorify God as God in their bodies. And they began to glorify themselves and other things as God in their bodies. And when that happened, God gave themself, gave them up to uncleanness through their lust of their hearts to dishonor their own bodies rather than to glorify. Between themselves, verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Uh, and, it, and it goes on and it, and it literally details homosexuality. Literally details homosexuality. Um, this, is, uh, this is preacher insert here. Uh, homosexuality, in, in one sense, I hope if you, need, if you need clarification on this, I'll help you later. But there's no need to judge homosexuality. Homosexuality is judgment. Read it. Romans chapter 1. Homosexuality is the judgment of God to people who glorified God not as God. When they knew God was God. That's that's what it says. They knew he was, but refused to honor him as such. And therefore were turned over to all sorts of uncleanness, even down to that end of depravity. Okay, I'm going to bounce off of that. That's not our subject matter. Um, but anyway, so your, your values are what is important to you, right? Simple? And your values, what is important to you, will cause you to do the things that line up with your values and not to do the things that don't line up with your values. In this particular case... God is important to us, so therefore we acknowledge God. Not only do we acknowledge Him in our thinking, but we respond to our thinking. We respond to the value of which we see between our relationship with God and us, and then we walk that value out. We simply walk the value of our relationship out in shoe leather. What we see as being value, we attach to our feet. We say, I'm going to live like I'm worth the blood of Jesus. I'm going to respond to the value of which I have been purchased by. So if I've been purchased by the blood, I'm going to walk as if I'm that valuable. Now, if you paid a bunch of I, I guarantee you, mom just bought a new, new car, the white Mercedes, this, what is it, a C63 AMG? Yeah, C63 AMG, cool looking thing. When it cranks up, I was like, ooh, yeah. Dad likes that sound a little better than his own sound, but he likes his car a little better than hers, even though his is 10 years old or whatever. Oh, is he liking your car a little better now? Okay, that, now, so if that were your car and, and you just bought it, what, a month ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, just a couple weeks ago, you just bought it and you heard a funny noise starting to come from... That's no big deal. No, sorry. You're like, are you kidding me? We paid good money for this car. It's still under warranty. I'm taking it. They're going to make this right. Now, hopefully you got a little nicer when you got there. But, right, that would be your heart. This is valuable. I'm not letting this go. You do the same in your walk with God. If you valued the price of which you paid, you do the same thing. Whoa, 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 wait a second. This is not bearing well with me. 
This sickness thing, I don't like it. And if I don't like it, I know Jesus don't like it. I'm going to do something about it. Not, Jesus, would you do something about it? All right, we'll, 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 move. we'll keep moving. So your values, what is important to you, will cause you to do the things that line up with your values and not do things that don't line up with your values. Connect that over to vision. Where there's no vision, people perish. Cast off restraint. Discipline. So we create disciplines because of values in order to help us achieve a goal. We create discipline because of value so that we might achieve a goal. Vision. That's the vision part. We create discipline because we value what we see. I shortened it up there for you. We create discipline because we value what we see. Here's some example. Uh, game day coming up, so here's, here's a good example for you. How many of you men really like to watch football? There's a few. It's not shameful. It's okay. You can raise your hand. Yeah, there we go. We got some more hands up. There's no shame. There shouldn't be any shame in church. Check it at the door. Either that or check it at the altar. But um, anyway, so uh, don't. Oh, I'm sorry. How many women? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I discriminated. You're right. How many women really like to watch some good football? Yeah, there's a few. Hey, whoa. I didn't expect Mary Lou. Okay, it's so good to have Jerry and Mary Lee Wookter down here in Florida with us. Aren't you glad you're down here? You know what's happening up there right now? Our friends texted us last night and showed us pictures of about four inches, of three. He said three inches at the time when he texted the picture. And he said, 16 inches coming tonight? He said, you should have flown up here. And I was like, yeah, rah, rah, rah. that would have been nice. Okay, anyway. So for those of you who really like to watch football, we have game day coming February 3rd. Um, some of you work extra hard and fast to be able to get home in time for Monday night football game or Thursday night football. I don't watch football. Do we still have Monday night football and Thursday night football? College Saturdays and, and NFLs or Sundays, Mondays and Thursdays. Too much football. Okay, uh, says, says Erica. So... Some of you work extra hard and fast to be able to get home in time for the game, right? Okay. Some of you work hard at keeping your wife happy on Mondays so that she'll let you stay up late and watch Monday night football. Okay. Got, got Stefan in, in agreement. But whether this is you or not, track with me. Build, build the story so that you can gain the principle and understanding rather than just resist because it's, you don't like football. Um, all right, so, so maybe you work an extra shift once a month. Jerry said, oh, record it, okay? So you work an extra shift once a month so that you can pay for DVR cable services so that you can record the football game. Amen. All right. All right, how about this? You work an extra shift so that you can pay for those DVR services, not because of work, but because, you know, church runs longer and into the football time, and, and so you, you record the game, right? Why? Because you record it later so that you don't miss what's going on in the, in the church. Nobody said in the game. You guys are too smart for your own britches. You knew that wasn't the answer, even though that's probably how most people respond. But you recorded it so that you could be at the place of value. That didn't mean the game wasn't valuable. Because you spent money to achieve that goal. To achieve the recording. But there, it was less value. It had less value. It was less valuable. So you know that... It's better to be there than to watch it or to hear it or, or whatever. And so you made a predetermination. You predetermined that I would rather be in the house of God or I would rather be with, with God and, and with God. Or let me say it this way. You'd rather be with Jesus. 
You'd rather be with Jesus than, than, than in front of the and television watching the game. So you recorded the game. It was still important so you could do it later. But you, you decided to be at the place of value. Why? Because if this is a place of value to you, I want you to understand where that value comes from. You say, well, I just value getting along with other people. Well, yes, that's very true. They also value getting with you. So the value is collective. The value is collective. Value is added into the house because all the pieces were in the house. And not just all the pieces in the same box together, but until all the pieces are appropriately joined, still what has value is not as useful. I've given you this analogy before in different times, but you've bought a Christmas gift, uh, you got given a gift, whatever, and it says on the outside of the box, some assembly required. The item purchased, shake it up, all the pieces in there, there's value. How much value? Whatever you paid for it. Nineteen ninety nine at the store down the street. But until it's put together, it's not very useful. Value, useless. But when it's all put together, it's valuable and useful. So here in this house, every one of you has value. But it's beyond just the value of the price that was paid for you. There is a value that comes in addition to the purchase. There's a value that comes into the assembling. There's a value that takes place when you and I are joined together, one to encourage the other. Don't diminish your value. Don't diminish your value. Many people come because they want to receive value. Also understand, come because you give value. All right. So your actions indicate your values. Uh, Jonathan Kimmel told us a couple weeks ago at the beginning of a worship service that our praise is an indication of our expectation. Right? Our praise is an indication of our expectation. Our actions is an indication of our value. Our actions is an indication of, of our value. Uh, so we, we've, got, we've got to see that and, and respond uh, accordingly. I... Um, how many of you am I losing now? No, I see three hands. They're, they're, they're honest enough. They're honest enough. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you one, one last example. Uh, what, I, what I want you to do is I, I want you to... What I'm getting at, what I hope you walk away with, is not just... Uh, I've said it already, but not just the value of what was paid for you. Are you worth the blood of Jesus? Absolutely. But there's, and, and I'm, I'm not going to get over into purpose, that's next week, but there's a purpose why the price was paid. And it's not just to have you. It's not just to have you. But it's to use you. There's a purpose why the purchase was made. Not just to have you, but to use you. And so uh, it, it becomes necessary that all the pieces are, are fitly joined together. Uh, a couple questions for you concerning vision and values and how they work together. Uh, I, already, I already said this to you. I'll say it to you in a slightly different way. Values demand discipline. Values demand discipline. We discipline ourselves because of a value so that we can see or so that we can get what we saw, right? So values demand discipline. Um, how about this? I see myself being a professional baseball player. So what becomes important? Not yet. Baseball becomes important. What am I, how am I going to discipline myself in order to achieve what I want? Practice and study of the game. So values demand discipline so you practice practice becomes necessary why because baseball just became important why because i saw myself as a professional baseball player uh how about this i see myself as a surgeon any surgeons in the room no we had one isn't dr fella a surgeon what is he just a regular doctor uh, like a medical doctor okay anyway i see myself as a surgeon all right well medical related issues just became important But in order to do anything about those medical-related issues, you better study. 
and you better practice. But I can tell you, nobody's going to want you to practice on them until you've studied. Right? Which, uh, which surgeon would you, would you rather operate on you? The one that knows the anatomy by books and study or the one that has performed that surgery 20 times? Both. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. What surgeon, and I didn't just come up with this, actually, it's in my notes. What, what about the surgeon that, that's done that procedure 200 times before? Well, that's a good question, successfully. What about this aspect? What if that surgeon has done that same procedure over and over and over and over again that he just doesn't care about it anymore? Do you still want that surgeon? No. Sometimes that's what people do in their Christian life. Oh, I've done this over and over and over and over again. And because it was familiar, it actually ended up diminishing in value. At least in the way something was treated. You didn't diminish in value, but your vision of the value diminished. Why? Because it just, oh, just, just do, we're going to go, go to church again. Read my Bible again. Go and pray again. That's good, good stuff. Good stuff. But if it diminishes in, in value, it actually doesn't affect the way it's, the way it's expected to. Um, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, what makes a good baseball player? One that knows the rules or one that knows the skills? Both. What makes a good Christian? One that knows the word, a hearer and a doer, the one that lives, lives the word. Okay, Matthew 23, 23. Uh, Luke eleven forty two 42 says, says the same thing. So, so here's a scriptural example here. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have done, and not leave the other undone. What makes a better Christian? The one who's incredibly knowledgeable, you can argue any doctrine, and you you can quote it forward and backwards, or or the one that actually lives the love of Christ. The one that lives the love of Christ. Now, you can't know Christ unless you get to know his word, unless you get to know Christ. So it requires both. You want the surgeon that, that, that I, listen, I don't want the guy that was last in his class operating on me. I'd like the guy that's first in his class. That, that's, that's my preference. So there's no, there's, there's no I'm, we're not diminishing the value of knowledge. We're exalting the value of practice. Where actually what we're exalting is not just not just the doing because you can do the wrong things. What, what, what we're doing is, is actually looking and saying we must understand the value of who we are in this world. Yes. Not just what we know, but who we are in this world. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a strong Christian? Well, I ask the question, what is a strong Christian? Incredibly knowledgeable? Or is it something beyond that? It's something well beyond that. Something well beyond that. Something well beyond that. I, I know of some people, they're, they're, they're next door to clueless of the word, but the love of God permeates out of them. Amen. And most of the time, those are the people that are hurting in the world. They'll be drawn to those people. Those are the ones that they'll be drawn to. Not somebody who can slap them up one side and down the other with 87 scriptures that deal with their case. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Both are, well, I don't mean to slap them upside down in the head with scriptures. That, that, that should really hardly ever be done. But uh, uh, so I want you to see, I, I, there's, a, there's particular values that I want you to understand of, of your value, not just the purchase price but for the vision that God saw, the reason why he purchased you. 
The reason why he paid the price, the reason why he exchanged the value, there was a purpose behind it. We'll get to purpose next week. What makes a strong Christian? So take, t- take that understanding, what we talked about, become that. Be that. Be that. Amen? Yeah. Everybody got quiet on me all of a sudden. I see things. For, for us here in this city that's, that's beyond what we've ever experienced before. And I tell you, we've experienced some incredible, incredible stuff. There's a lot of great heritage and a lot of great history, but the best is yet to come. It only gets better. It only gets better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Actually... Correction, can you not bow your heads? Can you lift up your heads? Can you lift up your face to the Lord? Lift up your face to the Lord. Receive strength. May he show you glimpses, pictures, visions of your purpose, visions of your value, the plans and purposes that he's ordained for you. May he show you the the, the parts and pieces of what you play and, and maybe even who and what you're connected to and the types of things that the Holy Ghost has purpose to achieve in your life, not just for you, but through you. Not just for you, but through you. May you see by the Holy Ghost the incredible value that you are to him, but also the incredible value that you are to this earth, to this world, to the people around you. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, let God be glorified in your life. Let God be glorified in your life. Let him be glorified in the words you say. Let him be glorified in the things you do. I'm not talking about living right. I'm talking about being righteous talking about being who you are, not trying to become. Be who you are. He's made you such. Manifest that which he's made you. Birds fly because they're designed to fly. They're made to fly. God made them to fly. If he wanted you to fly, he'd make you a bird. He made birds to fly. He made you to be righteous. Be righteous. Manifest the glories of God. Manifest the glories of God. Before we leave this moment, maybe somebody in the room, maybe even somebody listening on the internet or recording later on, you can call in, email us, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. But if you're, if you're listening and you say, y- you know what, I, I, okay, fine, I'm supposed to be the righteousness of God, but I just ain't, help me, all right, glad to do so, glad to do so. You just, you surrender your life to Jesus. Now, I'm not, I'm not going, going to say that all of a sudden everything, everything just becomes hunky-dory easy and, and it just becomes so good and wonderful and you flout, float on cloud nine. No, no, but I can tell you that Jesus will walk you through every situation. You'll have a hope and a peace in your heart that you didn't have before. I'm not telling you everything just gets easy. But I'm telling you, you become strong and he'll make you more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. You need to get saved this morning. You need to give your life to Jesus. Maybe you need to repent of, of, of something that you're holding on to that you know the Holy Ghost wants you to let it go. He's trying to help you, and you're refusing the help. So whatever category, you fit into one, one of those several categories there. Would you just lift your hand? And I'd love to minister to you and help you. Thank you, sir. Any others? Any others? Thank you, sir. Another? Any more? The Holy Ghost, the helper, he is here, and he's here to help you. So now I speak to everybody else. At at whatever position you are, at at whatever part of the journey, so to speak, at whatever leg of the race, whatever whatever mark you are along along life, the, the Holy Ghost is here to help you. If you're on the top, 
He'll help you when you're on the top. If you're in, on the bottom, he'll help you uh, get out of the bottom and rise to the top. Wherever you are, the Holy Ghost is your helper. Lean unto him. Lean on him. Like John the Beloved leaned on the chest of Jesus. Lean on him. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Lean on him. Trust the Holy Ghost. Let him lead you. Let him help you. Let him strengthen you. Let him comfort you. Lean on him. Lord, for these two that lifted their hands, I know at the moment they decided in their heart and in their mind, I need Jesus. Jesus, you were on the scene. You have forgiven them and cleansed them of all unrighteousness. You have filled their life with yours, and you'll walk with them hand in hand through life's difficulties, but causing them by their faith and by your faithfulness to rise up and overcome. All sin has been removed from you. Unrighteousness is no longer who you are. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. By his blood, washed clean, washed clean, washed clean. Father, breathe on them the breath of life. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Receive life in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's for all of us. Receive life in the name of Jesus. Come up. Come up higher. Ride the winds of the Spirit. Spread your wings like eagles and soar. Ride the winds of the Spirit. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. I send the wind to you. Ride the wind. I breathe in your direction. Float up on the winds, on the winds of heaven. Come up into higher places, into heavenly places. Rise up on wings with eagles. Let your youth be restored, your strength be restored. Be refreshed and renewed by my spirit, says the Lord. Be refreshed and renewed. Set your sights higher. Quit looking down below. Look up, look up, look up. Look up under the hills where comes your help. I am always above. Look unto me. Look unto me. Set your sights higher and rise up. Ride my wind. Ride my wind. Ride my wind. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for fresh vision. Fresh vision. Fresh vision. Blind eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Eyes that have been closed to seeing the vision of the Lord, be opened in Jesus' name. Receive light, life, and revelation. Your eyes being flooded with light. Those that are buried in condemnation, feeling worthless of no value, be free in the name of Jesus. May your heart be enlarged with the love that you would know the love of Christ and what the incredible inheritance of the saints is. You are an incredible inheritance to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Could you stand, lift your hands to the Lord, and just receive for another moment here before we go. Hallelujah. Life like no other. Strength like no other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Reaches to me. Oh, glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my strength, strength like no other. Turn this mic on at the piano, please. No other. Reaches to me. 
Hanama sevia boto soprobo kosha paravata ele le visifiata Nevra mata sabreki sekieta basata la la vasipedia da baya What I'm saying is if you're going to sing it, sing it up. Sing it happy, not slow. And I don't want you to become introspective. I want you to be focused on the Lord. Looking up, looking up, looking up, not looking down. You're not looking at yourself. You're looking at Him. He is your strength. He is your strength. He is your strength. He is your strength. He lifts you up. He lifts you up. Can you help us with some words, please? Fullness of your grace in the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me up in the fullness.
gets into it so much he closes his eyes and you just see him flailing away. Woo! <laughs> Maybe that's what you ought to do sometimes in your own walk. Just close your eyes and get to flailing around. <laughs> heard the term you pull yourself up by your bootstraps worst thing you could ever do in your life worst thing you could ever do it's all about your strength in the fullness of his grace in the fullness of his name he lifts you up you can either choose to be lifted or you can refuse to be lifted I choose, I choose, I choose. I open up my sail and let the wind of God propel me. Hallelujah. A sailboat has no ability within itself to propel itself. If it weren't for laws that God has set in motion, a bird wouldn't be able to fly even if it flapped his wings. By God's grace, you are lifted. By God's grace, you are empowered. Yeah. Amen. By His grace, you are lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you go today, you go in the grace of God. Now, see, you start playing it slow again. No, 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 up, 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 up. <laughs> yeah, you, you're playing, playing quiet, but the tempo is so, so is slow. You are a, a life like no other, strength like no other. It reaches to you. Strength like no other reaches to you. Hallelujah. Grab your baby bottles as you go out today. Strength like no other. See you at six o'clock tonight.
Wow. 